A suicide bombing at the US Embassy in the Turkish capital, Ankara, has killed a local security guard and wounded others. Video shows damage to a checkpoint, though reports say there was no damage inside the embassy, and no group has so far said it carried out the attack. Well, joining me now in the studio is Daniel Dombey, our Turkey correspondent. Um, Daniel, what sense are we getting right now about who might be responsible for the attack? Well, the interior minister in Turkey has suggested that a leftist organisation is to blame. And police sources have indicated, certainly to local media, that this is something called the Revolutionary Party Liberation Front, or words to that effect, I might be slightly scrambled. Uh, this is a reminder that violence in Turkey, sadly, is not the preserve of the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which is a quasi-separatist group, or indeed just Al-Qaeda. It's a country with a long and complicated history, and in the 1970s there was a lot of leftist, rightist violence. This may have been a hangover from that. It may also be a sign of anti-Americanism in action. Now, Turkey has, of course, suffered terrorist attacks from a wide range of groups over the years. Where does this one sit in that context, do you think? Well, I think, again, you know, the most important thing in Turkey in terms of the most pressing domestic issue is the three decade long conflict with the PKK or the Kurdistan Workers Party. We learned in figures uh, this week that 35,000 people have died in that. That's really the centre of attention at the moment. Um, there are talks, very preliminary talks going on to finally move towards uh, some kind of solution or end to that fight. But this is a reminder that there are these other splinter groups out there. Uh, it's also a reminder that in the post-Iraq war era, the US remains a very unpopular place in, in Turkey. It, uh, it polls some of the worst figures in terms of US popularity outside Pakistan in the world. Now, just on the US, um, how will this attack go down there? This does, of course, come shortly after a US ambassador lost his life in Benghazi and, of course, it amid a uh, huge debate about the role of US diplomats. Well, exactly. I mean, this is uh, Hillary Clinton's last day in office today. It's the day that John Kerry takes over. She talked about the September 11th, 2012 attack on Benghazi as the worst event to happen during her stewardship. The, it obviously feeds into a very important debate in the US about whether you should have fortress embassies where people are secure and whether you should go out and talk to people and try and associate with them as much as possible, as tragically the uh, ambassador to, to Libya, Chris Stevens, who was killed, tried to do. It's an almost insoluble issue in the US. People in US embassies complain they don't have the information they would like to see, and yet you also see there are these kind of attempts waged against them. Thankfully, as we said, although there was this very tragic loss of life, it doesn't appear to have penetrated uh, inside the embassy itself. Okay, well for now, Dan Dunby, thank you very much indeed. Thanks.